Hey guys, Henning and Morten from Flip Normals here. And today we're super proud to present the uh, next installment in our game series with Gavin Golden. Mm. This is Texturing Characters for Games. It's going to be a three and a half hour series that covers everything you need to know about getting your model ready for triple A games. Mm. We're, re we're really going to be covering the texturing process here, where Gavin is just taking you through from start to the very final strokes in Substance Painter here. Yeah. It's, it's a very elaborate series where it begins with covering the UV theory, like how what's a good layout for a full character like this. It's taken into um, in-depth baking in Marmoset, mm -hmm. just really showing the importance of that, what kind of maps you have to bake, like ID maps, curvature maps, AO, all these kind of things, which substance will require. And you'll also just need to know what they are in terms of uh, being a game artist. Yeah. Uh, then we're also going, oh, Gavin, I say we, <laughs> Gavin. <laughs> Gavin is going through an, um, an pre fairly in-depth guide to PBR or physically based rendering. This is really the foundation for uh, for all kind of texturing and shading today, whether it's film or games, but specifically games here. Yeah, yeah. This, is re this is relevant whether you're doing stylized work or you're going for full on realism. So um, yeah, Gavin tries to cover the different twists, differences between you know the, the different schools of thought will metalness and mm -hmm. spec R, which to use in which cases. There's some yeah. really in-depth theory here, going through you know which which kind of material materials has a certain kind of index, what color is it, you know. Yeah. So uh, once we understand uh, PBR, how that works, uh, he will give you an introduction to Substance Painter. So Substance Painter that will be the main tool being used in yeah. this entire series. And if you don't know how to use Painter, first you should learn it. But uh, <laughs> Gavin will will give you give you a fairly good introduction to how to use it. It's a fairly simple tool to use, but it's incredibly powerful. Mm. The stuff you can do in Painter is is it blows my mind every single time. Coming from coming from a Mari guy, I'm just so impressed by what you can do in Painter. It's really fast, and it's it's really amazing how fast you can prototype out and make final final yeah. textures for your models. Yeah, you can you can get started fairly quickly just by dragging on smart materials and stuff to like get yeah, like more like prototype or look for it, and then you can really just take it to like a hundred percent just by just by going crazy, looking at proper reference, and just really just nailing the look and full on realism you want you want to do here. Yeah. So uh, like we, like we we briefly mentioned here, like it, we st we start off with. Um, with smart materials. For like the skin, you just drag and drop a smart material on it for skin, just to see how it looks. This mm -hmm. can just speed up your work so much. So you have some poor settings, you generally have a lot of channels set up for you. Yeah, uh, it's gonna be like a mix between smart materials and hand painting, where mm. smart materials are super great for getting that base level of detail down. Mm. Like that really takes out a lot of the guesswork when it comes to, you know, if you're using spec R, what are the values that yeah. you need to use? And you can just focus on the pure color and the pure, pure artistic um, yeah. stuff behind painting. That's what's so great, great about the whole going back to the whole PBR thing as well. Here that it really just takes takes the guesswork out of it. Instead yeah. of like we, what we had to do in the past with all these like super bootleg shaders, it was kind of like <laughs> guessing the values for the various things. But now it, it's a standardized system across most engines and render engines. So it means that you can just spend your time just really painting. Yeah. You can instead of fiddling with technical numbers. You just make sure you spend all your time making sure everything just looks nice and feels right and that your model can just look the best it possibly can. The substance is really taking a lot of that guesswork mm. away from you, yeah. enabling you to just focus on the fun part, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you like numbers and doing shaders, then maybe, you know, you should, you should do something else. <laughs> yeah. We also try to cover how to really you know bang up your 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 fabrics and your textures with weathering inside mm. of substance substance has some really really cool tools and generators smart masks in order to take your take your textures to the next level yeah we go through covering the vest how to how to sort of Tell a story within the vest. I think Gavin is really good at art directing while he's painting, and, mm, and he's yes. really thought out the process a lot. And you can see that in the texturing process as well. So all the tools that he'll be using, you know, you can follow along, do the same kind of weathering to, to really yeah. make your fabrics stand out as well. It, it's so easy to take your textures up to like 60%. You can do that essentially with smart materials. Mm. But in order to to go from the base 60% look to really taking it to to the full asset Gavin is doing here, which I, I really think is a fantastic asset. Just looking at here, very impressed by it. So 
in order to do that, you just you need to do what Morton was just talking about, weathering. Like yeah. really, where do you where do you put the weathering? Like how old is this shirt? Like what kind of battle has this guy been in? <laughs> All these kind of things it just becomes incredibly important to think these these things through. And Gavin is is talking a lot about this, and uh, it just it just really makes it feel more credible. It just yeah. makes it look it just makes it look a lot better. <laughs> yeah. And one uh, and another thing that we're gonna going that we're going to be going through is how to add additional details to your model. Mm. So let's say from a previous series, which is the modeling characters for games, you know, we do our ZBrush sculpt, we do all the details we would like in the model. Mm -hmm. We get it into substance, but we realize, you know, there's still some story missing to the character. How do, how do we paint stubbles and how do we create extra wrinkles? These are the kinds of things you can still do in substance, adding like just a little bit of extra detail, just getting it to that 90 90 to 100 percent yeah exactly like like we said it's, it, you can take it up to like 60 percent really quickly but here this is this is taking up all the way yeah like uh, yeah, gavin is just really showing you how to yeah get these final stubbles and mm. the little wrinkles all these kind of things here uh so no, but not just from a technical point of view like making it look good that's also a big part of it as well yeah, yeah. So when, once all this here is done as well, we're talking about how how the texture can be exported from Substance using a fairly standardized setup here. And uh, then finally presenting your work in the Marmoset tool bag. Marmoset is, is one of the coolest tools I know of here. <laughs> you put your model in there and it just looks amazing. And, um, and it's all real time. <laughs> it's all real time. This from a film guy, this baffles me just how, <laughs> how good you can make something look there. So he's talking about here about um, how you can just present your work, how to optimize the shaders for it, how mm. to really just make your work shine and uh, just look the best it can. Because there's a lot of cool things you can do within Marmoset. You know, it mm. has has support for a lot of really advanced shaders. Yeah. Um, we're going to go through some anisotropic shaders just mm-hmm. to show how to get a really cool feel on the vest. Yeah. And the same with there's some subsurface scatter materials, mm. how to position your lights, and how to really present your models in the in, in the best way you, you possibly can. Yeah. So with all that, uh, we hope that you're going to enjoy this series and head over to flipnormals.com to, to check it out. Cool. Thanks, guys.